everyone, it's Jade from Boho Bookworm. I just got back from Waterstones. I've been left to my own devices today, so I've just made myself a cup of tea and some toast with, it was my very first time trying peanut butter and jam together. And I'm not so sure I like it. I, I think I prefer peanut butter and honey. That is amazing. But anyway, because I've got a couple of hours all by myself, I'm having copious cups of tea in a home mug. And I am about to start reading a new book, A Guest House, by Abby Frost. So I have never heard of this book before, but I just looked it up on Goodreads and it's got really good reviews. So I'm quite excited for it. I went to this Waterstones and it was quite a small one, so there wasn't like a massive thriller section, which was a little bit disappointing for me. I love like a proper big section, all for like thrillers and crime books, but this book did catch my eye. And it sounds like oddly similar in a way to the guest list by Lucy Folly. So it says, not all the guests will survive their stay. You use an app called Cloud b, &B to book a room online. And on a cold and windy afternoon, you arrive at the guest house, a dramatic old building on a remote stretch of hillside in Ireland. You are expecting a relaxing break, but you find something very different, something unimaginable because a killer has lured you and six other guests here and now you can't sleep. One thing's for certain, not all of you will come back from this holiday alive. Sounds really good and I don't know if you could hear how completely windy it is here today. Like, I think it's called Storm Kyle or something is um, hitting the UK at the mo moment after like all the torrential downpours of rain and before that there was a heat wave. So it's been a bit bonkers and yeah, considering it's all blustery and windy, this is what I'm going to be reading and I am ready for it. So let's cozy up with my book and cup of tea and I'll let you know how I get on with it. Oh, I forgot to mention on my walk to the shops, I was listening to uh, the new JP Delaney book, which is called uh, Playing Nice. And I love JP Delaney's books. I think they're brilliant. I speak about them quite a lot on this channel. So I was really excited to dive into this one. And I always try to go into thriller books blind because I don't like to be spoiled. Um, but from what I gather so far, I got about two hours into the audiobook. It is about a couple who realise that their premature son um, was basically switched at birth. And now there's this couple that have figured out that their son is not theirs. And they've like reached out to try and like introduce each other to their real families and stuff like that um and i think they're about two years old or something so i'm not sure where it's going but i'm really excited for it um yeah so far really 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 enjoying it but anyway back to this book okay let's read the first line of the guest house by abby frost this is the prologue hannah's train is skidded on the marble floor of the hall hmm she grabbed the wooden rail that ran along the wall to steady herself. Had to keep on her feet. Had to get out. I mean, that's instantly hooking. We're ready to dive in. I just finished the prologue and it was chilling i mean not only is it like super stormy windy this girl is like running for her life away from someone that's like trying to kill her i guess uh, the house is on fire and also i mean not only is it super windy and stuff here today i've also been reading all about those horrible fires in california and it's absolutely breaking my heart we had fires that pretty much destroyed my hometown in south africa um i think in 2017 and the devastation it caused was awful so my heart really goes out to everyone in california right now all the wildlife the firefighters the people oh, I, I can't it, yeah it's horrible so this book is actually pretty uh pretty creepy and harrowing at the moment but yeah really good prologue and now i'm gonna go on to chapter one and um just enjoy a very cozy day i mean tomorrow i've got a 15 hour shift of work on a saturday so i'm just 
completely mellowing out while I can because I'm going to be off my feet tomorrow. <laughs> I'm going to die. So, hence why I am just completely chilly. Okay, this book is getting good. I've only just finished chapter one and I'm completely hooked. I think there's going to be a lot of character development in this book as well. So, there's this girl called Hannah and obviously the prologue she's uh, getting attacked and chased by some killer at this guest house and then it goes back to like six weeks earlier or something in chapter one and she is um just completely hung over uh, she's lost her boyfriend she cheated on him um and she went out for the night with her friend her friend's really pissed off with her everyone's basically saying like you need to get your life together she's just fucking everything up and the chapter ends saying that her ex-boyfriend is dead and it's all her fault so amazing i'm really enjoying it so far i i'm connecting with the writing style i'm connecting with the main character i mean the fact that she's got to like restart in life all over again and all that kind of stuff and she lost her boyfriend and stuff like that like that is relatable for me the only thing that isn't is that i've never cheated so i am really enjoying it uh, more than i thought i would to be honest i just kind of thought oh well this looks all right like i had never heard of it before and hmm, genuinely surprised so when she was still with her boyfriend they'd booked this holiday in ireland together there i think they're somewhere close to london in this book and uh it was like this new place called the guest house and they, they were going to be basically the first ever guests to arrive in it so there's like no reviews of, of it or anything like that um and so she decided that she needs a bit of a break to just go and like get over some stuff and she decides to go to Ireland even though she's no longer with her her boyfriend who's passed away he got knocked off of his bike so that's where I am in the story right now now she's like trudging up to the guest house and is about to um see what it's like there and I can imagine it's gonna be creepy as fuck <laughs> hello I have had a nap I'm feeling much more revitalized I've got a black coffee over there with me now and there's some like crisps to keep me going for a few hours I got to the end of chapter three and so she arrived I kind of thought like the seven guests were gonna be her and some of her friends going away but turns out obviously like everyone hates her because she kind of made her boyfriend die or so they think so she goes away to Ireland to this guest house by herself and now slowly more guests are starting to filter in and two are like i think they might be indian or muslim guys um and they uh, the, the one is about her age this guy and then the other is his father and the father is not happy about this place at all he's just like no we should never have come this is a creepy building don't like it it's got bad feeling about it like something bad happened here so hmm but uh our main character hannah is really interested in the architecture and the other guy, Mohammed, he really likes the history of the the area and the building itself and stuff like that. So, yeah, really getting into it at the moment. Um, but I'm going to take a little bit of a break, otherwise my eyes are going to get destroyed. And I'm going to watch some Don't Tell the Bride on Netflix because I love that show. And I bet you, in a few minutes, I'll be bawling my eyes out because that happens. Oh, yep. Yeah. I'm off. I'm crying. She's in the dress. And it's beautiful. <sighs> Why am I such a diehard romantic? Even though I don't read romantic books. Oh God, I cry in this every time. Okay, I've stopped watching Don't Tell the Bride because I think it's better to watch it when I'm by myself at home with a glass of wine so I can cry. Um by myself <laughs> as sad as that sounds because yeah i don't want everyone to come back later and see me bawl my eyes out so reading this still I'm like almost 40 pages in now and i am enjoying it but i am noticing that the dialogue is irking me a little bit i just the rest of the writing so far has been nice and like actually really good but <sighs> I think there's such a fine line between good and bad dialogue and I feel like this is right on the spectrum of bad dialogue. That's so far my only qualm. There's a fourth guest. God, can you hear that wind? 
Um, there's a fourth guest that's arrived now. I'm not sure if they've said what her name is. Lucy. And she's like covered in rings and piercings and uh, you know colourful hair and stuff. So she's just arrived and like a family of three. So the house is filling up. Still no sign of the host. I'm pretty sure soon enough things are going to start kicking off. So that's my plan for now. <sighs> it is Friday. And I'm hoping to go to the pub later and play some pool or do something because I don't do very well being cooped up inside by myself all day. <laughs> anyway, it is good to finally do a reading vlog. I've been wanting to just chill out for a day and read for ages. But when I have time by myself, I normally just go absolutely mental and I need to get out and do stuff. <laughs> anyway, I'm just going to relax while I can. Good morning everyone, it's a few days later and I'm in bed having a coffee, haven't read for a few days because life's been busy, uh, but now I'm just taking a morning out, this is what I've wanted to do for so long, is just have a morning in bed with a cup of coffee and my book, so I'm still reading The Guest House by Abby Frost, and now that I've had like a few days break from it, and I'm busy reading it again, I'm starting to wonder if I'm, how much I'm actually going to like it, and I'll I'll tell you why. I've just picked it up and on page 69 that the writing is just not there for me. It says, like, it's just too cliche and like silly kind of trying to be this like creepy atmospheric read, but it's just not doing it. So it says, his other gloved hand was oddly twisted like the root of an old tree. She had, a, she had a sudden vision of him lying in wait in the storage room, only metres from her bed, running his twisted hand down the wall, listening to her every move. I don't know, like, I feel like it's trying so hard to, like, creep you out and get a sense of this, like, dodgy old man with his mangled arm, like, take my strong hand, dear. I don't know. I thought that was a bit much but I've only just opened the book so I'm gonna have my coffee wake up because it's like six o'clock in the morning maybe then I'll be a bit nicer 